Linda. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Dr. Labuti is in the house, and we would like to welcome her. She is our emergency medicine specialist at Stony Brook Eastern Long Island Hospital here in Greenport, and she has over 21 years of experience in the medical field. She graduated from Keck School of Medicine of the University of Southern California in 2000. And um, just to let you know, our emergency room provides round-the-clock care for more than 25,000 residents of the North Fork and Shelter Island. It is equipped with dedicated areas of trauma, cardiac, and specialized isolation rooms. And for over 95% of our patients, our ER has one of the shortest wait times in Suffolk County. So please welcome Dr. Labuti. Hello, I'm really happy to be here. Um, you know, I picked this topic to talk about because um, about 15 years ago, um, my two-year-old was diagnosed with autism. So that really put me into the, um, you know, alternative type of medicine world. Um, now I like to think of it as integrative medicine um, because I think that there are some really good things that we can take from uh, mainstream medicine or Western medicine, um, and there's some things that we can do, you know, at home, maybe working with a, a doctor that, um, you know, has some knowledge of things that we can do to keep our bodies, um, you know, healthy and strong without resorting to waiting to go to the doctor when we're sick. Um, so how is this going to work? Am I going to just ask you to, to move, or is there a uh, clicker or something? Clicker? Okay. Do I have to face it, or...? <laughs> Oh, there. <laughs> yep. So, go down. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so, this is just generally what I'm going to cover. Yes? Yeah? Oh, okay. Um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll stand this way so I can see what I'm... Um, talking about here. Um, so I just want to give you a quick overview of what integrative or complementary medicine is so you can understand that it's not just willy-nilly vitamins and supplements. There's actually a science behind it. Um, and then um, to let you know, just give you a broad overview of what your immune system is and how you can support it. And then um, what I personally do, um, my secret weapons and, and favorites that I keep at home that I've used for my family um, and friends that... Um, uh, have dealt with illnesses. So that's a lot to uh, look at. Um, basically, there's, there's three categories of medicine. There's Western conventional medicine, which is um, uh, the obvious stuff, the regular doctors that, that um, are in our community. Then there's something called complementary alternative medicine, or CAM, which is really the unconventional um, you know, not scientifically studied necessarily um, remedies and uh, practitioners that uh, use these things with conventional medicine. And then this new term is integrative medicine. And that's where I live in terms of um, what I think is best for, for my family and friends. Um, and that means we take the best of Western medicine. So, you know, we need that antibiotic when we have pneumonia or, um, you know, that painkiller when we broke our leg, um, but also uh, takes a look at some of the more um, natural things like uh, vitamins and supplements and foods um, that can help us keep our body strong and affect the course of diseases that we come across, especially colds and flus. I've had quite a bit of experience with this, raising um, three boys through, um, you know, through their young lives. Uh -huh. Um, so there's some, there's some principles behind, um, you know, this integrative medicine, and that is that the, the body has its own innate ability to heal itself. So natural uh, practitioners tend to uh, realize this and give things to the body, whether it's vitamins or supplements of some sort, that can help the body heal itself. Um, and it's a very holistic view of people, right? We're not just a bunch of separate organ systems running around. We're a whole person, our mental state, our spiritual state, our 
um, you know, our, our physical state are all interconnected. So your immune system is basically the protector, the cells and, and organs and proteins in your body that protects you from outside invaders, bacteria, viruses, fungi, toxins. Um, it's the thing that resides, if you look at the, the diagram, in your lymph nodes, in your thymus, in your tonsils, in your bone marrow, in your spleen. Um, so that's, that's sort of the little factories for your immune system to make all the cells that it needs. So I think it's pretty common sense in general. You know, we need sunshine, we need a healthy diet, we need exercise, um, you know, hydration, relaxation, sleep. I like the, um, I, I'd like to emphasize the relaxation piece of this because most people today are uh, running around stressed out of their minds. I can't tell you because of COVID in general, how many stressed, anxious people come into the hospital because of everything that's going on. And that in and of itself really wrecks havoc on your system. If you look at what, uh, how stress affects your body, it really affects every part of your, of your body. Um, your brain, you can you know, suffer from depression, irritability, brain fog. Um, cardiovascular system, we all know that stress can increase your chances of having a heart attack or a stroke. Um, it can raise your cholesterol, it can raise your blood pressure. Um, joints and muscles, um, stress leads to inflammation. Um, inflammation can lead to a lot of aches and pains and, and joint problems. And then, of course, the immune system. It can lower your immune defenses, it can in increase your risk for um, infections. Skin and gut, these are just, um, you know, uh, uh, big systems of the body, right? Your skin covers, uh, is a huge, the biggest organ in your body, and your gut can be adversely affected um, by stress. Uh, there is a saying that your gut is your second brain. Your gut actually produces neurotransmitters that your brain uses, like serotonin, for example. So you hear people say things like, I got a gut feeling. So that's all very, um, you know, it's more like an intuitive uh, mind thought sort of process, but it resides in your gut as well. So when you're stressed out, that's going to be one of the first places that takes a hit and then your reproductive system. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard stories. I've had a few friends that have been trying to have children. And over the course of time, they can't get pregnant, they go to the fertility doctor, they go through IVF, they give up, it just doesn't work, I'm gonna adopt a child. And the minute they adopt that child, they get pregnant. So it's just a really powerful, um, uh, you know, um, testament to how stress can really adversely affect you. I like this slide because, does anyone here have a pet? Okay, so you guys know how important pets are. I have a 90 pound golden retriever and that dog is better than any form of medication or or anti-anxiety uh, pill that I could possibly take. I mean, it doesn't take anything when he just looks at me and, you know, it's like, it just you just melt. So having a pet, my mother had a guinea pig. It doesn't have to be a dog or a cat. My mother had a guinea pig for three years and that was just her stress release. She loved that little animal. So it could be anything. Uh, meditate, has anyone in here ever meditated? Yeah, I think that that, meditate. Yeah, so um, I started meditating maybe 10 years ago and it's super, super hard at first because you're sitting there trying to be still and it's like for one minute, it's like forget it. You know, it took me a long time to work up. Well, back in February, I went to Cancun and I did a meditation retreat. We meditated in one sitting near the end of the retreat for four hours from 4 a.m. in the morning until 8 a.m. And I thought at the beginning of the week, I'll never make it. But by the end of the week, because we would do an hour meditation, then we'd do a walking meditation on the beach, then we'd do an evening meditation for about an hour, an hour and a half. But by the time we got to Saturday and Sunday, we got up at four o'clock both days and we did four hours. And let me tell you, you have some crazy things happening when you get that quiet for that long. It was amazing. But the amount of just 
I don't know, your whole perspective on life changes when you can get into those states, so I highly recommend it. Listening to music, that's another favorite. Um, I've got a couple of different playlists for whatever it is I'm trying to do. Am I trying to relax? I'll put this on. If I'm trying to exercise, I'll put that on. If I'm trying to be upbeat. So these are, you know, obviously common sense kind of things, but they're super important, and I think we tend to, like, not think of these things um, as much as, you know, what kind of pill can I take to relax or, you know, get rid of stress? So these are five of my favorite um, items that I have in my, my pharmacy at home. Uh, vitamin C, zinc, uh, vitamin D, oil of oregano, and elderberry. And I put the doses up there that I use when myself or someone in my family starts getting a cold or starts getting a flu. So they're much higher than the recommended um, daily allowance but they can really knock things out of you. And I'll, I'll explain in, in just brief detail uh, each one of them. So vitamin C can act as a coenzyme, it can act as an antioxidant and an immune system booster. All of us know about vitamin C, right? Everybody says vitamin C for colds and whatnot. Um, but what's re really interesting about vitamin C, especially as a coenzyme is, it is especially important for building collagen in your body. And collagen um, is one of the things that uh, supports all of the systems in your body. There's collagen everywhere. It's in all of your connective tissue. And um, but, you know, as an antioxidant, I think that's what we're most familiar with. Um, what I think is really interesting about it is um, you know, as an antioxidant, it's going to uh, you know, help uh, get rid of free radicals, it will help fight um, infections, and um, it also actually breaks down histamine. So I never really knew this until I started putting my thoughts together for this. Um, so histamine is the thing that's released when you have a bad allergic reaction, and it actually helps break down histamine. So if you have some allergic reaction, pop a couple extra vitamin Cs over a day or two, and it should help, help with that. So it also um, helps your immune system by... Um, uh, enabling your body to make white blood cells. White blood cells are basically your immune system. You've got red blood cells and white blood cells, lymphocytes and macro macrocytes, all these different kinds of things. So um, I like to know what these things do rather than, oh, take lots of vitamin C, because when you actually know you're actually helping your white blood cells, then it just, I don't know, to me it just makes it um, make a lot more sense. So zinc is probably, if I, had to, if I had to choose one of any of these things, zinc would be the one I chose. If I didn't do any, if I only did one of the five, zinc would be it. We're all extremely zinc deficient, most of us. It's a mineral that is um, super important for so many different things in your body. Um, and uh, uh, it, you know, it, it, so overall it tells your body uh, by working with your DNA, how, how your body needs to work, how it needs to function. And it's just where we, you know, there's a lot of minerals that we are just deficient in, but zinc is the one. So I do something called zinc shock therapy whenever I or my children start getting uh, flus or colds. And I basically dose every two hours for maybe four or five um, doses um, of zinc, high doses of zinc for two days. I, two days every couple hours and it'll just knock it out of you. Now, you guys all would have to talk to your own doctors about this, so, because there's, you know, if you have kidney issues or other things, you just need to make sure that it's safe for you. But that's something that um, has worked really well for knocking things down. Um, you know, and zinc is uh, found in meat, seafood, nuts, seeds. Um, there, okay. Um, so vitamin D, that's gotten a lot of press in the last decade or so. When I, when I started doing my um, research on autism, vitamin D was starting to come up as this super important vitamin, um, you know, for staying healthy for your immune system. And I never really understood why. I mean, we, we know that vitamin D is needed for absorption of calcium, and they know that um, if your vitamin D levels are low, then you're only going to absorb maybe 10% to 15%. If your vitamin D levels are, are good, then you're going to absorb 30 to 40%, which is important for a lot of other things as well. Um, but actually, vitamin D, it's a pretty complex uh, process how vitamin D helps your immune system. But again, it's got um, a role with white blood cells. It's got, uh, there's receptors and activ activating enzymes on the surface of white blood cells. So that is just um, sort of a glimpse into why it's so important for your immune system. 
And you know, if it's if you're you know low vitamin D, um, that's you know under um, under um, you know under uh, utilization of like these different processes, then infections are going to cite. Uh, you know, uh, kick in. If your immune system is overactive, things like autoimmunity can happen. And vitamin D plays a role in all of that in regulating and balancing your immune system. So oil of oregano is, um, I've, I've discovered it a couple years ago, and um, it is an antibacterial, an antiviral, an antifungal, and it's really, really good for strep infections. And um, you know, strep, so acne, for example, right? Young people that get acne and they have terrible acne on their face. Well, that is actually strep that's living in their liver because they've been exposed to it. We're all exposed to it. Living in their liver and then the liver pushes it out of the skin. That's a way of the, the liver detoxifying anything that's, that's uh, not serving the body. And it comes out in the skin. So that's all stress. So um, that's all um, strep. So a lot of doctors, when, when kids have really severe acne put them on strong antibiotics and they're on these antibiotics for months and months you know it's very traumatic for a young person to have a face full of acne and then all the scarring I had a niece that was that way and she was on antibiotics for like two years so oil of oregano is an amazing alternative and also for strep throat infections it's just really powerful against strep for some reason even though it's got antiviral properties as well Has anybody here ever used elderberry syrup? Yep. Okay. Yep, the, the pills are good too. So elderberry is um, something that's been used for centuries um, to fight infections, clear complexions, boost immunity. Um, it's actually packed with antioxidants and vitamins that work with your, your immune system. But what's especially great about um, elderberry is it actually loosens mucus. So if you have an upper respiratory infection that's viral, you, you take a lot of elderberry syrup and it will loosen the mu mu mucus so it doesn't turn into pneumonia or bronchitis. So I think that's a really um, useful thing to have in your cabinet. Okay, and now my favorite one of all time you guys will never have heard of this, I'm sure. So this is something called LDM, and it stands for Lomatium Dissectum. And it is an herb that is uh, in the parsley family. It's grown on the mountains of the Sierra Nevadas. And um, this company, Barlow Herbal, Max Barlow lived um, in the 40s and 50s. Um, that was when he was very interested in this. And I'll tell you the story of how he became interested in it. So the great flu pandemic of 1917 and 18, where 50 million people died, that was a really powerful flu. Um, what they did in order to uh, collect data on you know, the different parts of the world and what were the number of cases of people that had the flu, who was dying from the flu. They didn't have the internet, they didn't have smartphones. What they did was they would have people that were designated to certain areas and they would go out there um, and they would visit these areas and they would collect the data manually. So there was a, um, a doctor from San Francisco who was assigned to this Sierra Nevada area it was the Washu Indians, these were Western Indians, and he went there and he said, you know, what are your numbers? Who's sick? Who's dying? And they're like, well, none of us are dying. We're all fine. And he's like, how can that be? You know, this is one of the deadliest flus we've ever had. So they said, do you see this growing on the side of the mountain? Come with us over here. And they took him into their drying hut and they showed him all of these herbs that they were drying, this LDM. And they showed him how to make, uh, you know, how to grind it down and make their elixir or whatever their uh, you know, how they prepared it back then. And so this San Francisco doctor said, can I take some of this back with me to the hospitals because everybody's dying in the hospitals. So I'm sure you can guess where I'm going with this. He took it back to the hospitals in San Francisco and everybody stopped dying. So this particular one, so the, the Indians call it heat powerful medicine. It's actually antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. For whatever reason, it seems to be extremely strong against um, the influenza type of viruses. Um, it's extremely strong against herpes viruses. So people that get zoster or shingles, um, that is, uh, this is something that works really well with this. It also works well with strap, 
uh, strep and staph. Um, and I'll tell you a, a quick uh, story about my first real experience with it. Um, I would say it was probably about 12 years ago. Um, I, my son with autism was five, and we had um, uh, my second son, who was about three and a half, four at the time. Well, he used to get services at home, so we would have a lot of people. You know, this was before he was in kindergarten. So we had 40 hours of people coming into our home, giving him therapy and services. And so this one woman, Jen, um, who's a dear friend of the family to this day, um, she worked with Jack. Uh, my son with autism is Jack. My other son is Sam. Uh, she came to work with him, um, and she worked with him on Friday, and she would spend about two and a half hours with him. And of course, she was interacting with our whole family. So she called me on Saturday morning, and she said, Andy, I'm really sorry, but I am really sick, and I went to the doctor, and I have H1N1. So do you remember when H1N1, I guess it was roughly 12 years ago, um, was around? And so I said, okay, you know, I'll keep an eye out. And so that's Saturday morning. So Sunday morning, my son Sam, who's three and a half, four, I can't remember exactly, uh, wakes up and he is burning up. He's got a 104 degree temperature and he's just like hit by a truck, just out. So I said, you know what? I've never put this to the test. I had it in my, in my uh, pantry and I just dosed him three or four times throughout the day. He was completely fever free by the evening. The next morning he woke up as if he was completely fine. And I'll never forget that. Again, I don't know if it was H1N1 at the time. I don't know what it was, but it was some sort of pretty powerful virus. And it wiped it out of him. And I've seen that over the years. So this is just one that I love to have on hand because um, it works. Um, so that's it. I wouldn't do any of these things without talking to your doctor because there's lots of things that, you know, too many minerals and things like that. Vitamin D, it's fat soluble. You know, you got to work with your doctor and whatever it is that you guys, um, you know, personally have, uh, you know, going on with your health. So does anybody have any questions? Yep. So it's, you start small, so it, it comes by droppers, you know, it's a dropper liquid, and they tell you to start small, they'll tell you to start with like maybe five or ten drops, but by the time you've worked up, um, you know, worked up and you know that you can tolerate it, um, you can take two dropperfuls, and you can do that every couple hours for an acute infection. And it's, it's you know, I have no stock in the company, but it's BarlowHerbal.com. <laughs> Um, I just think they're a really, uh, really great company. They're very um, reputable. It's, uh, you know, Max Barlow started it. His granddaughter, Jane, now runs it. Just a very, you know, you know pure, good company without contaminants and, and other things. They're, they're in it for the right reason. No, they have a ton of, no, what's that? They do. They have a whole line of different immune support and um, uh, even skincare products. Yep, they're a pretty. They're a good company. Yeah. Do you recommend any of these items when you feel perfectly healthy? You're not sick. What would you do with them? I just yeah. I keep it on hand. I I like to save them for when I am sick because um, you know I I imagine if you were taking it every day there could be some sort of a tolerance that builds up as well. Um, but certainly the vitamin C, the zinc, the um, vitamin C, zinc, and vitamin D, those are things I take and my kids take every day because I just think we're all deficient in it and that just antioxidants. Yeah. A glass of orange juice is really good because it does have a lot of bioavailable vitamin C and believe it or not, it's got bioavailable calcium. So there's a lot of calcium in orange juice, but that's not enough to get to the thousands of milligrams that you need to really knock something out. Linus Pauling was the sort of, in, not the inventor, but the founder of all this vitamin C movement from, from decades ago. And he um, clearly did um, most of his best work with much higher doses than you know, 500 milligrams even. And it's water soluble, so you just pee it out. But again, if you have any kidney issues, then you need to talk to your doctor. Yeah. Yes. All of it can be bought online. Yes. And, you know, my, um, you know, my favorite, you know, if you want to write down my favorite brands that I know are clean, there's a company called Pure Encapsulations, P U R E. En encapsulations. Um, they are just highly um, 
uh, reputable, and I, I, my sister is a, a biochemist, and she worked for the vitamin shop for many years as their quality control person. And she said the stuff that went through there that was nothing close to what they claimed it could be was appalling to her. She worked there for maybe a year, and she couldn't take it anymore because she couldn't, in good conscience, work for that company. So you have to you have to sort of know which brands. Um, I also like Nature's Answer. That whole line, Nature's Answer. They actually make a Lomatium as well. And then um, Gaia, G-A-I-A. -A. All of their products are amazing, and they have a full line of, of these kinds of things, Gaia herbs. Um, and they're all available online. I'm trying to think if there's another company. Uh, Vimergy, V-I-M-E-R-G-Y. They make a, a beautiful microsomal vitamin C that's very bi bioavailable. Uh, they make... Uh, no, Vimergy, V-I-M, as in Mary, E-R-G-Y. And they've got, um, they make B12, they make um, D, they make zinc. They have a liquid zinc that's really good. I like doing the, the zinc shock therapy with a liquid zinc, and they make the liquid zinc that I use. Again, just over the years, knowing, you know, people that were, you know, pharmacists that were creating supplement makers, you know, we, you just sort of know who the good companies are after time and having a sister that worked in a, a company. Um, so, I, you know, I'm sure there's other good companies too, but just try to make sure they're, you know, manufactured well. Yep. Could you tell me the word after Barlow? Oh, herbal. H-E-R-B-A-L. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yes. to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was told at the time that I would have to be especially careful of pulmonary infections. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in particular that you can recommend uh, uh, in any one of these uh, you know, treatments that would benefit me? Elderberry. Elderberry? Yep. Elderberry is, um, besides being antioxidant, antiviral, it also has... Um, it breaks up the mucus. So if you're prone to getting bronchitis or pneumonia, it's, I, that would be the one I would choose. Um, and zinc. I, I think zinc, everybody should be on zinc. Well, I already take it. Okay, good. Yep. Yep. Add elderberry. There's, there's pill form, there's liquid form. That's a good one. Sure. Yes. Say it again. I go as high as 30 a day, um, but when I do the zinc shock therapy, I'm doing 35 times a day for two days. And again, it's a short-term big hit um, that will just, just give that extra boost to knock out whatever the invader is. It's not something you would do long-term. So 10 to 30 per day, you know, again, get cleared by your doctor that that's safe for you. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I do. And my kids get high doses too. And again, zinc is water soluble, so it's not as dangerous as like overdosing on a fat soluble like vitamin A or vitamin D. Okay, that's it. Yep. Yep. Bilberry is good for the eyes. That's one that's been studied with the eyes. That and I can't pronounce this word, but uh, word as taxanthum, as tazanthum is another one, and bilberry extract are good for eye visual things. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wish you all good health. All right. <laughs>